Hello, welcome to Footprints once again. Um, today we are here to continue with uh, a lovely conversation that we started with uh, Mr. Joris Wattenberg. And uh, he recounted his experiences live beginning in second D and his experiences through Ghana, Achimota School, University of Ghana, the United Kingdom, the US, and back to Ghana. Today we are here to continue with that conversation. We'll take a short break and when we come back, we'll be zooming straight to life in Ghana, life as playwright with Mr. Joris Wattenberg. My name is Samuel Atamensa. This is Footprint and I have Mr. Joris Wattenberg. Welcome back, sir. Thanks. Thanks a lot. So, so sir, we are... Um, we know that you've been part of um, writing plays and, and putting such shows together. Can you take us through your own, um, the whole trajectory of your playwright experiences? Well, I, um, first of all, um, I passed by Nigeria before coming here. So I got to meet with a lot of the Nigerian stars. You mean of, before coming back uh, to Back Ghana? to Ghana in 2001. Oh, okay. So I was in Nigeria for about a year mm. then. Um, I met with a lot of the, uh, the stars of, uh, you know, Yukeri Anunobi, uh, Regina Askia, all these, uh, uh, and their directors, uh, Jata Amata, uh, quite a few names, but now uh, mm. I'm a bit old now. But um, one thing I realized was this, that the Nigerians tended to read a lot more than Ghanaians. See, somebody said that if you Did want you to... Did you say tended? Tended. Well, uh, they still do. They still do, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Someone said that if you want to hide something from a Ghanaian, put it in a book. <laughs> and it will be hidden forever. Yes. They, they, they don't... The only way you can be a good writer is if you read. You've got to read and read and read and read and read and read. I mean, I read every book that there was. I was an avid reader from the age of five. So mm. my father used to buy me books, Ivanhoe. I mean, there was no book on this planet that I didn't read. Mm. By the time I was 14 years old, I'd read everything that there was. So writing came very, easy, yeah. very, very naturally to me. Ghanaians are good writers, but because they haven't read much, so they find it difficult Restrict, to put restricted, it yeah. together. Back in our time in the seventies, I mean, we sort of were the trailblazers. Mm. That is, we started the whole thing about Evans Hunter, you know, myself, you know, people like that uh, in television, uh, Bosumpra, Cobb Taylor, uh, Joyce Ayi, who was writing. Uh, Avenue A at the mm. time. Uh, these are the people who started the writing revolution, so to mm. speak, as far as mm. Ghana is concerned. And we are way ahead of Nigerians. In fact, the film industry it developed in Ghana. The Nigerians came to learn from us, and then they rather developed the money-making ventures out of it. Yeah, of course they have uh, the numbers too. So it, it was a matter more of technique than numbers because. I mean, I can sit there and watch a Nigerian movie and it makes a lot of sense to me. And I'll go and watch a Ghanaian movie and half the time... And you're waiting for the movie. <laughs> <laughs> After hey, finishing man. the whole episode, you're still waiting yeah, for the movie. movie is that? <laughs> Especially the comedy ones. Jeez. You watch the whole episode and you're asking, yes, so where's the comedy? <laughs> you know? So, I think that it probably may be useful for people to set up sort of schools on the net, encouraging people to read, 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 read. Mm. That, is, that, that, that is the, you don't, you, don't, you don't create writers, you don't teach people to write. You only let them read. If they read enough, they will be able to formulate stories, they will be able to know where it begins and where it should end and what the middle part should be and all that. So in those days, we only had the art center. Mm. There was no national theater and Everybody went there to go and see uh, uh, a play. A play, yeah. So, there was, I wrote two or three plays that we put up over there. Mm. Uh, me and my friends. Uh, which uh, year would this be? 
oh, this will be 72, 73. I was still writing on Sofodazi, and I was still doing plays at the Arts Center. Okay. You know? And I was still in law school. Mm -hmm. So I was with um, Glover, who was always with me, acting with me, uh, Osei DK. You know, we were all like friends together, acting. Oh, you know, DK Osei. DK Osei, yeah. Ambassador DK Osei. Ambassador DK Osei, yeah. We're very, very close there. <laughs> we, we, we did everything together. You know. Uh, uh, but Ambassador, <laughs> you are next, so yes, watch out. <laughs> <laughs> so we did all those things at the time. There's one thing that I always remember, that you never really had enough of an audience. Yeah. If we were lucky and a bunch of black Americans had come, tourists had come into town, You'll then you had all of them coming to see a play at the art center. But there was one thing which always happened that puzzled me a lot. There was a guy called Sakakwe, and he had this musical play called The Lost Fisherman. And every time The Lost Fisherman was put on, half the town went to see it. And I was so jealous about it. Mm. You know, I thought, wow, why is it that everybody turns up to go and see Sakakwe's Lost Fisherman? But you know, when we put on plays, three or four or five people do. Academically, fine. They were selling my books to universities and all that, which I really hated because people like Amate Du and uh, Isi Sutherland and others, they had books by Heinemanns being sold to the high schools, to the secondary schools. So they were known. Yeah. You know, because all these kids were me, only third year university. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so only the very top guys knew that mm -hmm. I was actually a published writer mm -hmm. who was studied in school. All the kids knew about Efo Sutherland and Amar yeah. Tedu and uh, the beautiful ones are, are not yet born, born, like that. Yeah, Aikwama and, uh, and rest, yeah. people like that. They didn't know that I was a very serious writer as well. Mm. So they only associated me with Osofrazi. And I, yeah, yeah, it really, yeah. really made me jealous. And in the theater, Sakakwe also made me jealous until mm. one day I said, I've got to write a musical as well. <laughs> you know, because I realized that it was a music yeah, which drove. Yeah. You know, people, and the music was beautiful. You know, girl songs and all that, all yeah. these fishermen, you know, along and all that. It's like an opera. And in, back in Hachimoto, we had operas. Uh, you know, the Paris of Peasants, Gilbert and Sullivan operas and all that. So we knew the genre. So um, this was what we did, at least, in terms of uh, mm -hmm. writing. Mm -hmm. And they got published and everything and all that. You made some money from royalties, from uh, sales of the, you know, to the universities yeah, and everything. But yeah. it was not as satisfying as actually a play is not something to be read; it's something to be seen. Okay. Because it is when a director yeah, takes it mean. and brings it to yes. life, and you sit there and watch the characters unfold and everything. That's when you realize. So every year, Cape Coast or Legon, they will invite me to come and see their students. Uh, uh, so. Produce. Do you still write? I'm writing I at the moment, the... but I'm writing a physics book. Uh, to uh... we studied physics. No, I didn't. I learned it by myself. <laughs> I woke up one morning and I said to myself, "What is all this nonsense about? About uh, Einstein being a great physicist? You know, I think he's an idiot." And I've I've proved it in the book. W w w do you get confused at times? No, 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 no. This is the greatest physics book ever written. It, 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 I, I took up Newton, I modified him, I corrected his mistakes, I took up Einstein, totally disproved everything. Mathematically, it was mathematics. I, I was going to uh, uh, Professor um, Alote. Alote, yes. He was working with me. You can see, he says, ah, he did a, a short interview and said, Joris, we know him as a writer and a lawyer and all that. Why he learned this business on? We don't know, but he's very good at it. Wow. <laughs> and, and Professor uh, Yebo Mensah, who's the dean of physics at Cape Coast University, mm -hmm. he swears by me. So, so you are a physicist now? Serious one. I mean, the, the main part of our metering is all that, which does the actual work. I invented it. We'll and Israeli it. scientists joined in uh, developing it. Yeah. But I invented it. So, so, so you don't write plays anymore. No, 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 I write physics. Wow. Mathematics, mathematical physics, not uh, just physics. 
So you are a version and I'm of, always uh, comparing with my my cousin uh, Max. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you are a version of Nelcon. 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 Remember Nelcon? No. Well, who is he? Our day we use Nelcon and Parker, the physics books that we we use. Oh, I see. No, you you are an art student, so maybe that's what I you didn't know see. any physics at all. But your cousin knows. When that. I was in uh, secondary <laughs> school, I had nine in physics, nine in mathematics. Nine in biology, nine in chemistry. I didn't understand the word. They want to know. No, no, I didn't know anything about it. We had Abbott, Abbott, and all those people. They, well, most of them were British people. So I didn't understand the books. How could I remember the names of the books? <laughs> <laughs> no, if oh, I look today, I would not have been allowed to continue school. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. then they will put aside your science subjects, take your best That's subjects, correct. and let you continue. Yeah, but it's interesting that you've you've kind of moved into another area to the extent that you you become a leading light in in discovering new new ways of expressing physics. Oh, don't know that we are we are about to create a machine that will create infinite amounts of electrical energy. Mm. I mean, everything is going to change. Your cousin Max is he? Is he yeah, an he's engineer? He's right. He's right here. Yeah. He's a chemical engineer. Okay, so he's an engineer. So yeah. he 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 complements your absolutely. Your, yeah. So I'll you get it the by mathematics, and you will do the chemistry to put it together. Lovely. So you do this by intuition or by reading? Pure knowledge. No, no. I, I have knowledge a, from where? I have a physics book called um, by Atabiza, which is studied at third year. Uh, no, no, master's level. Yeah. Yeah, in Oxford and Cambridge and all that. This is serious. Yeah, physics, quantum, what? physics, quantum, quantum, quantum mechanics. Physics. Yeah, modern mechanics? modern concepts of uh, of physics. But the visa. Yeah, but what physics? Gen quantum physics. I mean, so that's, very, that's heavy mathematics. Yes, this is serious Schrodinger's cat and things like that. <laughs> ah. I mean, <laughs> so you're still doing calculus, higher level of calculus and, and integrations and differentiations of uh, of all kinds of. I mean, you're, not, you're talking about serious mathematics, here, not little boys. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about mathematical but, physics. But you know, I've yet to physics, find two words and fifteen pages of mathematics to prove it. <laughs> yeah, I'm, 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 because I haven't I haven't met anybody who has at a later stage in life taken mathematics as a hobby like you you know it's like Charlie let me just try this and see because I think I should be able to do it I mean it's the reverse actually you do engineering for a long time and then you say look let me start writing uh, history books or so you know something like that well you see if my cousin is a chemical engineer yeah. can get up and say all right right I'm good with a bit of law now so why can I do the same <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't understand any of the chemical engineering <laughs> Physics, physics is, is physics is is a big deal. It's a big oh yes, deal. it is because it is the basis of the universe. Mm -hmm. So you need to um, you need to really understand that. But you see, when you go into it very deeply, yeah. So hang on. So you are doing quantum physics. Yes, quantum physics. Yes, you are, and you are doing light. Yes, you are doing you are doing thermodynamics. Yes. I like this man. He knows that. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I use shadows and Pythagoras theorem to prove that the speed of light is not constant. In any case, it cannot be constant. It cannot. Anyway, I, I've always wondered, but who am I? Well, no, no. It's very simple. Mm -hmm. Any object moving at a constant velocity cannot generate heat. You only generate heat when you slow down. In acceleration, when when you change, when you change, yeah. speed, yeah, yeah, in acceleration. That's why I say in acceleration. Mm. So wow. it cannot be constant. I mean, we could go in this tangent for a long time. I can see you in the in the, in the business yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so this is still Footprint. My name is Samuel Thomas. I will be right back. <laughs> Hey, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Now we are back to the real issue. The reason we are here talking to Joris. And this man is a physicist, he's a playwright, he's a businessman, um, he's a Jew. Um, you, you practice Judaism, right? right? No, or I don't practice to? Judaism. Okay, you don't uh, practice I'm Judaism. I'm against Judaism. Okay. I practice Torah. That is, I'm a very strict, super orthodox follower of the of, Torah, of the, of the Torah, law. Of the law, okay. Judaism. Is, was created by the house of Judah. Oh, it has okay. nothing to do with the children of Israel. Okay. 
this is Judah himself. It's like Fantis creating religion and saying uh -huh. Fantism. Because they have something, Mozama Disco Christo Church. Uh, most, most you know, that, that kind of nonsense. <laughs> but, and well, then, well, and, sorry, that's not referring <laughs> to that particular church. So no, if I'm not talking about uh, the church, I'm talking yeah, about the Judaism. Whole, okay, okay, you know, okay. Because, I mean, they will say that, the Jews will say that Moses led the Jews, which is not true. Moses led the children of Israel, 12 tribes of Israel. There's only two of them which are present now, Judah and Benjamin, together called the Jews. Okay. The other 10 tribes are lost. And every prophecy in the Bible is that at the end of time, they'll be brought back together again mm -hmm. in Israel and will serve the God of Israel forever and ever with, okay. with David as their king. Okay, we'll come back to that. Sir. So maybe another time we'll interview you on this particular part of your life. But let's go to Osofudazi. Yeah. Tell me, Osofudazi, you know, most Ghanaians age um, 30 and above, I would say, um, experience or soft does it for a very long time. So sometime early to mid uh, 70s, right through the 80s and, and 90s. And 90s. Around about 20 years. Yeah, um, we saw a soft does it on a weekly basis, and mm. they always had something to tell us. So where where, where did you get this concept from? Um, right from the beginning, when I I wrote my first play, Corpses Comedy which was published by Oxford University Press. Yeah, Corpses Comedy. Yeah. I, I've always uh, been a satirical writer. Mm -hmm. I've always believed in writing that imparts some kind of advice, you know, knowledge, uh, experience, whatever it is and all that. Uh, couched in uh, satirical comedy. Yeah. Couched in comedy terms. Um, I believe that people will learn better when they can have a laugh over it. Uh, if you are too serious about teaching, and most of us, when we went to school, the teacher, our teachers who were very, very serious, we never learned anything from them. Mm. Because, you know, they would... We had one uh, uh, our teacher in geography, Scope, uh, Oida Chrissy. He was so serious, I've always hated geography. <laughs> <laughs> no, because, they, you know, they would beat you if you didn't get it right. Mm. Mm. But the teachers were very relaxed and would put you through You remember some of them? Oh, someone like um, Sherwood, for example, mm. was, was brilliant. There was a guy in our class called uh, uh, Fia. And um, he thought he was going to pull one on Mr. Sherwood, you see. So he got up one day and said, Sir, do you know Sherwood Forest in, uh, in uh, England? You know, we thought he was really pulling one on Sherwood. She said, yes. And if you go there, you will fear. <laughs> <laughs> and fear sat down totally. That was it. <laughs> punchline. You know, yeah, punchline. He had uh, turned the pun back on him. Yes, 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 yes. yes. So these are the sort of teachers that, you know, whenever they, mm -hmm. you're working with them, yeah. you can enjoy right. en enjoy the lessons, enjoy the, the enjoy school and everything else and all that. Mm -hmm. So I always concentrated on trying to make some comedy. Mm. And this was not easy with uh, the Osovat as a group because, you know, they didn't speak any English. And I was yeah. determined to do everything in the tree because I believe very strongly. Let, let, me, let me take you back. So did you have a concept waiting for a group of people to experiment with? Or there was something you had observed about this particular group that, that uh, made, made, made them attractive? No, there was a program run by a guy called Cobb Taylor at the time, who was the producer director. At, at, at broadcasting. At broadcasting. Yeah. And his assistant floor manager was Bosom Pra. And um, this was a weekly concert party program. Mm -hmm. So every week they will bring in a different concert party. Right. right. And they will sing and act mm -hmm. and all this, like the concert parties do. Yeah. You know. Then one day, uh, Cobb Taylor was sent off to Canada to do a course. So Busum Pra being his assistant took over the concert party thing. And after running it for a couple of weeks, he called me up and said we were very, very good friends at the time. I was going up and down broadcasting doing What Nana Busum Pra is still Pra. around, right? Nana Busum Pra. Is no, he died. Oh, okay. Oh, about 10, 12 years ago. Is it the same person who ran the copyrights office at some point? 
I don't know. Okay, no, no, oh, you were out of town. So, I, okay, right, okay. I mean, he, he, I think he took over the whole thing. Yeah. And he started even doing something called Kantaka. Or Kantaka uh, uh, yeah, or, Kantata. Yeah. yeah, something like that. Yeah. Anyway, he took over there. Then he called me. At that time, I was running up and down broadcasting doing Avenue A with Joyce, Joyce I, and yeah. all that. So he called me and said, you know, if we selected a group and let them do it for two or three weeks. Because Taylor was going to be away for three months. So, Bosompro had like 12 episodes of this concert mm -hmm. party. You know, it was called Showcase. Yeah, Showcase. Showcase, yeah, that's correct. Yeah, yeah. every week to do. So after two episodes, he called me and said, if you can write something, we can use one group to just do it for two or three times. We could, first of all, have you paid 10 CDs this was a huge amount of money yeah. in those days. Ten yeah. cities. I mean, per episode. That's, you that's could have 15 girlfriends out of that one alone. Oh, you know okay. I mean? <laughs> it's part of the budget. Uh, eh? Yeah. No, I mean, uh, beer was 20 pesos. Oh. If you had 10 cities, I mean, no, mm. you could, I mean, you, you could, could do be the man about town. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, you're loaded. So he said, well, it will get you paid 10 cities. Then each of the artists was also being paid 10 cities. They could collect five cities from each of them uh -huh. <laughs> for getting them to do, you know, a show more than once. Because they all came on sort of once every six months or something. Mm -hmm. There are loads and loads of um, concert parties, you see. So I said, well, why not? He said, well, what, 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 we'll call it. He said, give me five minutes. <laughs> so, all right, okay, we'll call ourselves Nazi. You know, all right, OK. All right, who, who shall we select? I said, who came last week? He said, the Opon concert group. I said, call them. Let me see if they have any use. He called them in. Uh, so Supodi was the one who attracted me most because mm -hmm. he was he was full of fun. Yeah, you know, he was he was cracking a joke every second. So I said, right, let's use them, you know, for this. So we started, and I just wrote the script in English because you have to write have a script before yeah. the broadcast people will pay you. Okay. They actually submitted it to the production, so that sent it to the commercial. Then they pay you. So I wrote every single one of them. Wow. Then I'll sit them down and direct them to say this. Say this, you say this. No, stop over here. You go over here and say this. I mean, they were saying what I had written in English. Mm -hmm. Then at a certain point, I said, All right, now this gives you a, a, a time, you know, for the next three minutes to ad lib. You know, but ad lib in this direction so that it will create this story effect, yeah. and this particular effect. I want it to come out that X is happening. It was a very hard job. I used to rehearse them for four hours. Wow. You know, twice a week. So, and remember, I was in Legon, mm. studying law. Wow. And I was at the castle, advising on uh, Operation Feed Yourself, mm. food distribution, student routes. <laughs> so, Toby, beginning, do you recall the number of people who formed the, the, the Soft Dazzy group? Oh, the same number. There were seven of them. You remember the names? Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Eko Baima and uh, BKC were the two girls. Mm -hmm. Then uh, Osofu himself, who was Fripo Manso. Mm -hmm. Then Supodi, mm -hmm. who was married to Eko Baima, but I just gotten divorced from her. <laughs> oh, really? Yes. They were, I never then, knew that. <laughs> they, they were married. She's now married to some old, I think he's dead by now. He, she went and married some 900 year old German man or something. No, uh, 20 years ago, 30 years ago. Okay. No, 30 years ago, I think. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gone. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> you were talking about this. Kudu Kwachi, Ferradai, and uh, Opon himself, Opon. who okay. was the leader. So you had uh, Frimpon Manso, who's a soft dazzle. Yeah. We had Ekuya Bwahima. And then uh, BKC. And then we had BKC. Yeah. Then we had Ferradai. Yeah. And Kudu Kwachi. Kudu Kwachi. Who died early. Yeah, they had SK Opon himself. Yeah. Okay. And... Who else? Uh, that, that was it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. they, were, they were the, the they were, main. They were, they, were, they were the main, yeah. Every night they would bring one or two people mm -hmm. as uh, mm -hmm. guest artists and all that. Mm -hmm. But I had to write for those main people. Okay. And it was a financial affair right from the beginning. Okay, so yeah. this one is Nana Bosompra randomly asking you to do something because at. at is it? At, well, Coptela was Coptela out of town. Was out of and town. And we had a chance to make some money. Okay, good. At this time, you had not um, caught the attention of the head of state 
with this? No, 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 at all. This was only the beginning. Okay. This was, uh, we started this in 72. I mean, um, this thing went on for about three months. Okay. Cop Taylor came back and then uh, was coming to take over and reintroduce his showcase. Mm -hmm. Then somebody told the head of programs at uh, that time, uh, Rabbi Williams, Leo, that no, people like this uh, show that's going on, you know. Mm -hmm. So Cop Taylor may have to have another, another so the show showcase here. Yeah. Then the director of television, uh, Betty Kisleyford, then came in and said, yeah, I think from what we're hearing about town, this show must go on. Man, I couldn't believe it. I thought, why, well, some more tense it is? <laughs> <laughs> oh. It was extraordinary. Mm -hmm. Then suddenly, they said, okay, they'll try it for another two months and see whether it will still garner yeah. popularity. I said, wow, that's 40 cities, eh? <laughs> per month, 80. Uh -huh. Shucks, man, I can order a dress for my girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. And that's how uh, it yeah. went on for another two, three, four, five, and then suddenly, Cocktail now was out. Person Pro was promoted to become president director of that particular show. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Usu became our floor manager. Which was Martin? No, oh, uh, John. John Osu. Osu. His brother oh. was Robert Osu, who, yeah. who was in News Reader yeah. and all that. Yeah, he's still around. He's still around, yeah. yeah he's no. still around. I, I understand he's having a few difficulties. I've been well, very worried about okay. him. Okay, not that I know of. I him. haven't seen him in the last, say, six months, but, ah, okay. but he's around. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, we formed a very close knit uh, mm. uh, family. Mm -hmm. um, it was not easy uh, in the sense that there was a lot of. Um, Pressure. You know, to come up with a new story every week, eh? you know, sometimes I would go to broadcasting house. The rehearsals were from 2 o'clock on Wednesday to 5 o'clock. You know, we had our own studio where we would do the rehearsals and all that. And by the time I got there, I didn't know what I was, <laughs> I was going to write. Wow. <laughs> I mean, it's one of the most extraordinarily difficult things to do is to create a new story every week. Every week, yeah. So yeah. I'll get there. I said, Dick, say, come. Come and sit on my lap. <laughs> then she come and sit on my lap, and then I'll start writing. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> you, <laughs> you, you won't get away with that <laughs> in, in 2019. No, no way. No, no. <laughs> uh, they start calling it uh, uh, assault or something. <laughs> I go by my mama say that much of my mama Oh, I think it's a wonderful character. It was, oh yeah, yeah. it was, uh, yeah. it was, um, it was very, very. So very these difficult. were pure talented people without formal um, education in drama. Well, I think that our people who do things naturally yeah. are much better. Than, uh, than, than, than getting somebody to go and learn how to uh, mm -hmm. act or anything like that. Because when people act more naturally, they, they become... And remember these guys had years and years behind them of acting on stage in their normal concert party rooms, yeah, yeah. touring the whole well, country and everything like that. Yeah. Um, mostly with the African Brothers Band Yes. Touring the whole, touring the whole country and all that, yeah. yeah. So, you know, those were the days where they used to have, um, you know, the band with a music group, and then they had a, either a magician or a comedian yes. uh, attached yeah. to the group. Or, or a play that these a guys play. would present, That's and then correct. before the guys would come and come play, play the full music. Wow. You know, so it was... Um, remember that this is also how um, um, theatre began in the West. Okay. You know, where women were not allowed to perform, mm -hmm. you know, and the men dressed as women, mm -hmm. they did the same thing in the West also. Oh, wow. You know, and, and uh, a lot of the theater was more opera. It's Shakespeare and others who came and introduced the pure okay. uh, 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 theater uh, where uh, it was... No, no music and all that. So the, the genre opera and operatus was separated from, from uh, okay. pure, so, pure 
let's go back Asafudazi. which would be um your best Asafudazi show that you remember good it was almost 50 years ago <laughs> it's almost 50 but years you ago wrote, you wrote them so i know um it was almost years. a lot of the time especially after i wrote it for three years especially yeah. after the head of state in, invited me to Jebel, and then I made it a bit more um, critical of, uh, of, of social uh, uh, problems so as to improve the society yeah. and also a bit of propaganda to push Yeah, because that's certain, when um, certain, uh, we could ideas. hear people talking about um, soft as it being used for propaganda. I mean, we were, we were kids, but we could hear people talk about that. Yeah, um, it was necessary that people understood the kind of programs that the government wanted to do. Remember that this was a... But this was supposed to be, you know, for fun and entertainment. No. At that time, remember that this was an extremely difficult government that we had in Ghana. It is the only government where there was no aid from anybody, no loans from anybody, because of the ENTR that they had. Mm -hmm. So the government performed without a penny from the white man. And remember also while they're doing that, that since the time of Kwame Nkrumah until the time of Kufo, 60% of Ghana's budget was always given by the white man. Mm -hmm. And for us, zero. Mm. You being, you and I mean, the Champo. The Champo government, yes. Okay, so you're part of it. Oh, yes, very much so. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't deny it at all. I mean, yeah. I, I'm not ashamed of it. Oh, no. I mean, we... uh, uh, I, I, I mean, somebody came to me to talk about politics, and I was saying, no, I'm not interested in anybody's politics. I admire those who do well, you know, the administrations who do well. I think Kufo was a really, really good president. I think Nanado is a very, very good president. I think that he'll be successful if given the room and the chance and all that. But I, I think that uh, the NDC left him a very, very bad economy that he needs time to put together. Remember, Kufo spent the first four years uh, getting the, the economy sorted out from the disaster of the Rollins years and all that. So, um, but as a politician myself, being involved with anybody, no. Okay. I, I've seen it all before. Right, right. And at a very early age. So, at two, I can understand. 21 years old. Yeah. It was, uh, I, I remember, we used to go to bed, yeah? We had a telephone. We had three telephones by your bedside. And throughout the night, every hour, you take each phone and listen. If one is down, you start running. <laughs> it means somebody's trying Someone to cool. Is doing that. Oh, wow. <laughs> so it wasn't funny at all. It wasn't, mm -hmm. it wasn't. Um, so let uh, me, you know, so let me, since you say you don't remember, let me try this in 74, thereabouts, when, uh, was it 74, 75, August 74, when we went right? Yes. Um, I remember the soft dazzy that you created. Pa 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 pa, and you feel you feel you feel nine. Yes, yeah. <laughs> that was one of the fun ones. Um, this guy was in charge of it, uh, General Akufu, mm -hmm. the guy who became head of state head of after state. they overthrew Achampo mm -hmm. and all that. He worked with me on that one. He was oh. the head of the committee for the changeover from mm -hmm. left to right. Mm -hmm. So you managed uh, kind of the so communication. I worked with him. Yes, yeah, mm -hmm. I worked with him very closely on that and uh, directed him what to do and what not to do. And then we used this on our as and all that. And it was a very smooth... So you created this, the music and all that? Sport, yes, yes, yes. No, no, I, everything in our I had to do it myself. Mm. Well, because if you want to create a certain impression or advance a certain notion or a certain concept, then you've got to do it yourself. If you live with somebody else, they will come up with the wrong uh, mm -hmm. notions. I'm a composer as well. I mean, I, I compose even classical music. Wow. No, I can I'll, I'll, if you hear my phone, you hear it going, you, you hear classical music, it was composed by myself. I mean, for your prowess in physics, I won't doubt that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because, you know, compose, composing classical music is exactly like mathematics. Yeah, yeah, that's, what, that's why I'm saying that. that. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, do, wow. I, do, I do a lot of, uh, and, and popular music as well. Wow. Mm. Uh, you sing so I'm trying to do. Uh, I'm trying to do um, a musical. Right. You know, I did one in '95 here called uh, King Lion's Law, and I'm trying to polish it up mm -hmm. and take it to Broadway. Wow. And it's wow. going to be a big hit. 
We will be meeting you there in Broadway um, <laughs> one of these days. We are still talking to um, Joris Wattenberg, and this is Footprint. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Footprints. This is City TV, and I'm here with Mr. Joris Wattenberg. I like just the mention of the name, Joris Wattenberg. <laughs> Thanks a lot. You know, I'm sure in your, in your surgeon outside of Ghana, many were they who had the name and expected to see a white man. Indeed, indeed, <laughs> yes. And there were many were they which were, who were disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when we were, were in London, I had, I had a friend, uh, Kingsley Buckman, and then he, he was always the first to be invited to interviews. <laughs> Indeed, I mean, and then they oh, hear Kingsley uh, Backman, and, and then you know when they come out, they say, Mr. Backman, Mr. Backman, and then and then Blackface just whips and says, "Pardon me, is it, are you Backman?" Yes, so, yes, sir. <laughs> no, I had the same experience um, because I lived a lot of the time in Hendon, which, okay. is, the, which is the Jewish part Jewish, of London, right. Golders Green, Hendon, yeah, Golders Green, Hendon, yeah. and all that. Mm. And um, many times they sent me, the United Jewish Congress would send me uh, a request to pay up my membership and stuff like that, because they, we all contribute. So. Yeah. And then sometimes somebody would pop in and say, well, uh, we're looking for Mr. Wartenberg, and I would show my face. Uh, excuse me, no, um, we are not looking for the butler. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. <laughs> I said, I'm not the butler, I'm only the garden boy. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow, that's a good shade. <laughs> Can wow. you come to the garden? Uh, hey, enjoy me, there. enjoy, enjoy me. me. <laughs> <laughs> right, I must want to, what do you want? <laughs> Thank you. So we are for the Jewish Congress, and then the minute they would, you know, yeah. uh, it's all that. Yeah, but yeah. when it comes to money, uh, Jews uh, quickly uh, rally, rally and forget yeah. what, they, uh, mm -hmm. whether you are black, red, or blue. They say, well, we're going to have the money. Bring so, your money. Good. So, so, you know, you have this sort of uh, problem. But I think it's a difficulty because if you're being invited, you know, you, you, you turn up mm -hmm. and people don't see what <laughs> they wanted to see, yeah. I think they get the disconnection. So I remember, again, with Operation Feed Yourself, you wrote a lot of uh, Osof Dazi plays. Um, that's it. kind of sold yeah. the idea well. Remember, uh, absolutely. Because that? we we created the entire thing, and you know, to get people to really, uh, people have no idea what it takes to to make people produce what they don't normally. You see, for, the first thing you must recognize is that. There's a very huge difference between a black man and a white man when it comes to distance. When you go to a black man and say to him, I want you to farm over here, he says, uh, okay, uh, you want to give me a farm? I say, yes. He says, how many? Uh, 50 acres? He says, oh, I hear any baby. What am I two acres? Me nebaku. Me nebaku. Yeah. If you say the same thing to a white man, 50 acres, he says, no, I want 50,000 acres. Distance. Bigger and bigger and bigger. And when he finishes going around the whole earth, he wants to go to the moon and go to... The black man, he wants to stay in the same place. He doesn't want to go anywhere at all. Mm -hmm. Like you said, you know, there's a certain inertia. You know, yeah. that's because, you know, I say in my physics book, yeah. we produce energy. Black is energy. And energy goes in circles while heat goes in straight lines. So we go in circles, uh, you know, we never go anywhere. We always turn around ourselves, <laughs> all mm. the time. But then, that is the way of predicting uh, life, as it were. Mm -hmm. What is more important in your generation is that unlike our generation where we only had Ghana Broadcasting Corporation, and I could put on a software as it, and it could become if it was good enough, mm -hmm. everyone would watch it because they had no other option Not at all. but to watch that thing. Not at all. You are now competing on City FM with at City TV yeah. with what? 400, 500 different stations? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You More know, than that. More than that. I mean, I said, I think Over myself. Over a thousand, actually. 
Uh, really? Eh? Yeah, because you see, the options go beyond your, your traditional media. Um, online media mm -hmm. now is up for, for, for the cloud. Yes, it's become, it's become so, important as well. Because a lot of people consume um, media stuff from new media, so internet, you know, social media. And they'll, they'll get the BBC news just by picking their phones and, and there they go. So I'm you thinking know, to so. myself, I mean, if, when you have your creative people sit down, what are, what are they thinking? I mean, you got a thousand people <laughs> to compete against. I mean, yeah. what can you do to be better than the rest? And now the interviewer becomes the interviewee. Yeah. What do you do to become as good as you have become? <laughs> well, well, you see, it's, it's not doing anything different from what you are doing. It's minding the gap. You find a niche. Mind the gap. Mind the gap. I always tell my production, mind the gap, because there's always a gap. There's always a gap. People are in a hurry, but there's always a gap. For instance, we, we woke up one day and then referenced Operation Feed Yourself. And then we said, well, the government is embarking on something which I, I in my estimation, has been uh, relatively successful, which is the planting for food and jobs. Mm. But in my estimation, that's targeted at farmers for them to increase their yield, scale up, and do what you are talking about. Yeah. But there's always the non-farmers who still have a certain kind of, a little opportunity. They come from the villages like we all do. And you have a two, three acre land lying down that you can put to a certain kind of use. Can we, you know, generate people's energy and drive them towards using to create farms, small holder farms? You know, so it's every time looking for a gap in the system and bringing essence to it. Like you said, it was difficult in your day producing writing on a weekly basis. Nothing has changed. At times it's difficult that you create a concept and by the time you are done with a concept, you either think that this thing is useless and you have to throw it away. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Uh, yeah, I know. All those uh, 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 continually you know, wanting to improve it. Yeah, and you're right again. We, can, we have a concept that we have put together in the last almost one year um, for a, a TV drama or, you know. And we've, we have everything written, they've done the scripts and everything, we just haven't gone into production. Every week or every other week, I have somebody send me a proposal for a similar concept. Yesterday I got one who sent me if they have gone into production. So, so every day is a new turf for competition because the, the, the wisdom or the idea does not sit in only one person's head. And now because there are new platforms, it's, it calls for different ways of expressing different channels. So as for us, every day is competition. <laughs> yes, yes, I can see that. I mean, and, and I really admire the fact that you have to be faced with them. Um, but then, as you say, I mean, if you look for the niche, then yeah. you should be able to mm. discover it. I'd mm. like to see a couple of the scripts that you've got. Then we will do. We'll bring and, it and, for perfection. And, and, and see where... What you uh, Thank you very much, you know. sir. Thank you. <laughs> uh, um, um, we didn't you know. pay for this, but you are offering to us. <laughs> yes, yes, and and yes. so watch out for the hairdressers. It will be well, coming back soon. Because one thing that I've always dreamt about is the possibility of doing a program here mm -hmm. and selling it to the Americans and selling it to, you know, Fox Television, selling it to uh, BBC, HBO and all that. Yeah. And yeah. that is the one thing that we should be aiming for. Yeah. It is extreme. The world has become such a place that, and this is what accounts for the success of Netflix and other people. Today, you put out anything, and Chinese, Nigerians, everybody in the world is part of your audience mm. and part of your target yeah, audience. Yeah. I mean, there's somebody who, who approached me who, who, who has the same thinking, you know, uh, reversing the trend. 
taking our production yeah. into the world and yes. building our own concepts. Yes. You know, Augustine Blay works with the vice president and he's he's very passionate about this. So maybe we can bring bring, yeah, bring him we, we in touch with you and, to, and then see We how. should be able to do work that we can sell out there. And yeah. that Well the Nigerians makes are you, doing it. Yes. The Nigerians are doing it. Yeah. But even they are doing it on a very small scale. Well, the money, the money in terms the money of is good. The, in terms of the revenue they are generating, they generate, yes. you don't call it small uh, because yeah. they go, they, they, they've, they've, by, they've gone beyond. They, they've overtaken France. They've overtaken, in certain cases, the United Kingdom. So, so this is huge. <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> but remember this: that they are exploiting their own population also. I mean, in Texas alone. There are more than five million Nigerians. Why not? So why not? <laughs> you know, it this, is a numbers game. Uh, it's a numbers said. game. Whether it's a Chinese man watching, <laughs> whether it's an Ethiopian, whether whoever watches, it's a numbers game. The eyeballs are counted. Yeah. So we should do a program mm -hmm. that attracts even a Chinese man to watch. That's correct. That's and correct. once we do that, the numbers will become serious numbers. Mm -hmm. You know, because these days on the internet, if you are selling anything for maybe ten million dollars, they will ask you. Are you selling tomatoes? You know, uh -huh. I mean, <laughs> internet now is billions. So That's correct. Once That's you correct. get it right, True. the billions will start flowing in. Mm -hmm. so and I think it should be possible to have the kind of concept, the kind of mm -hmm. uh, story yeah. that, would, uh, that is marketable across, across barriers. And mostly, it is what we have that we don't exploit. Yeah. Magic. Yeah. Fantasy stories are what everybody in the world go for. This is why Game of Thrones and things like that, mm -hmm. and uh, Harry Potter and others yeah. are successful. We, 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 we'll be talking to uh, Professor, Professor Diego. Remember that name? Good Lord. No, <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember the name, but I don't remember the person. No, no, no. He used to do magic back in the day, but he's still alive. And, oh, I see. Uh, okay. We have um, located where he is. He'll be, he'll be on this program very soon. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, very, okay. Very well, here, what I'm talking about magic, I'm not talking about. I'm talking about fantasy. I'm no, talking no, about I, I you, the, the juju kind of story mm. where somebody is able to do amazing things, and yet well, that's within, what we think of Harry Potter. Yes, you know, you exactly. Know, bringing the this quote unquote the supernatural into everyday Precisely. life. Precisely. You know, so, and we have more of that than they do. Well, we do. We just haven't packaged. So somebody has to. But the thing is, the other side is that we take these things a bit more seriously. Um, to, to a religious <laughs> level, yes, right, and, and they right, don't. And they, so they that's don't. why we are, they so are able they to do what they want. Because, but, but we take it very very seriously. <laughs> yeah, <I'm telling> you. <laughs> friend, we, we don't think it's drama. Uh, uh, we think it's life. A <laughs> friend, friend, friend told me some very funny story. So he says that somebody swindled him in Takrade a few weeks ago, and um, it was some money that he was supposed to do something with. And the guy says, "Okay, you have to give me twenty thousand CDs." Uh, because we have to pay, he, he wants to enter the oil services. We have to pay this um, insurance guy, and this insurance guy is, is here, so we pay him, so bring the money. And so he also he was in a hurry, so he gave the money, and then they claimed they had paid. Then he was waiting for results, nothing was happening. Now he calls the number, and the number is off. The other number somebody picks, he says, is the wrong number. So he said, ah, he didn't know, and that was his last money. So he decided at dawn, he woke up around 2 a.m. and then sent a text to the, the number. Uh, he said, hello, good morning. Sorry to disturb you. I just, I just got to my hometown to see the fetish priest. <laughs> <laughs> Please, this is the last warning. You either return my money I mean, because I can't reverse whatever he does. He, <laughs> he said, when he sent it, he said, ah, what have I done to myself? He said, ah, let me wait. He said the following morning around 10 a.m. He saw his mobile money, half of the <laughs> money. <laughs> half of the money had been sent back to him. And he was watching. Ah, so is a half. So he started calling the numbers friends. Whether well, the other one, he can threaten the other one too. Then he said, Charlie, let me take this let half. <laughs> this is what we believe in. Well, it works for us. <laughs> you. Mr. Wattenberg, I think is me. But let me ask, are you are you in touch with any of the Osof Dazi people? They're all dead though. Oh, but Osof Dazi is still alive from Pumaso. I didn't know that. 
Okay. Is he here in Ghana? No, he's not. I think he was in America, but I don't know. Yeah, what he well, was. He must be the only person my, alive. My, my last encounter with him myself was um, was some somewhere in 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 New Jersey. Okay. And this was in 90, 97, 98. I just ran. Oh. I just I just ran but into when him. They were ninety years old then. I mean, even back I just in ran the, into him. In back in the seventies, the these guys were were forty, fifty years old. Yeah. They're not young people. I said, I said no. 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 And he was working at the airport. The there. time is long mm. past. Yeah, yeah. So there's yeah, no point yeah. in in uh, interviews like this. Okay, but yeah. I never. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, but tell uh, me before we go, quick one before we go. This, you know, they were giving houses in Dansoman and and. I and, mentioned and, right from the beginning. Yeah, which we became we, very. We were all given uh, a house controversial uh, in Dansoman. Oh, you are, you also benefited yes, yes, from the yes, Dansoman but we house. We paid for it. Oh, you paid. Yes. They all paid. Yes. Ah, but the, the, it was the, allocated to us, no, and we paid I mean, for it. We heard that they were giving houses. No, 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 no. Yeah. Look, if anything at all, yeah, the kind of um, uh, service, if it that they uh, offered, well, that yeah. they offered yeah. and the kind of uh, impact, entertainment yeah. impact that they had yeah. on, on this, I mean, was 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 not worth the kind of singular housing. That's correct. But they were paid for. There was a whole bunch of people from. Um, uh, Zoro, uh, I.B. Phillips, mm -hmm. uh, Nabe Intando. They were all friends of ours who were paying for everything that we wanted. Wow. Remember that th th these were stars. That's correct. And there were people who... who wanted to. The, the head of state himself was giving them money. Wow. You know, and he didn't have a lot of it. <laughs> and they were stylish too. They were stylish. Oh, I mean, there were many, many people who Especially wanted Fred to... Adai, who would Fred call Adai. them... And uh, have a party for them. People buy them tickets, go to London. You know, all kinds of stuff. Wow. So the houses were all paid for. Okay. You know? On this note, we'll have to shut the door. Thank you very much, Mr. Joris it's, Watson. It's, it's, thank it's you been a pleasure also. talking to you. And um, um, I'll still come back for more, um, you know, on private basis. Oh, 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 yeah, okay. the second D stories and all the likes. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. <laughs> we didn't get to sing, but that's fine. We'll find some of your songs and then add to our editing. Yes, I'll yeah. send you some. <laughs> Thank you very much. So you've been watching Footprints with Joris Wattenberg. My name is Samuel Atamensa. See you next week. <laughs>